This year marks the 30th global celebration of press freedom. It was declared by the UN General Assembly in 1993 following the recommendation of UNESCO's General Conference in 1991. The objective is to raise awareness about the importance of freedom of the press as well as remind governments to uphold the right to freedom of expression and free press. The global theme for the 2023 World Press Freedom Day is shaping a future of rights, freedom of expression as a driver for all other human rights. The theme for Ghana's celebration, which is not too distinct from the global one, is freedom of expression, a driver for all human rights for Ghana's development. Press freedom in Ghana has dropped in the 2023 global ranking from the 60th to the 62nd position and is attributed to the infringement of rights of media personnel over the past few years. Some of these are the Ahmed Swale murder case, threats on the life of Manasseh Azuri, Radio Ada versus the Ada Traditional Council, when a reporter from the station was barred from participating in traditional activities in the area. Or Europa Radio and the Kumasi Traditional Council, among others. On the back of these developments, the president of the Ghana Journalist Association, Albert Jumfo, speaking at the commemoration of the 2023 World Press Freedom Day in Accra, urged the government to amend certain provisions of the Electronic Communications Act and the Criminal Code, specifically Section 208 of the Criminal and Other Offences Act of 1960, Act. 29. In the coming weeks, the GJ will inaugurate the See Something, Say Something initiative. This, this initiative is distinct from that of the Ministry of National Security and aims to encourage citizens to volunteer information about individuals who plan to attack or have already attacked China. We believe that this will substantially contribute to the reduction of journalistic assault. It will also empower citizens at the local level to ensure accountability and transparency. Madam Chairperson, being proactive is essential if you are to protect the right to free expression. And I must say that the GJA has been very proactive in recent years with regards to defending this right. Former President of the Ghana Journalist Association, Gifty Afeni Datsi, is urging the media to intensify its role in the fight against illegal mining in the country. She further urged the media to develop a strong interest in the economic management of the country. On this occasion, it is relevant to remind ourselves that based on the happenings we know now, the agenda to stop Galamse should be treated as a major existential threat that should go beyond the coalition that first highlighted the menace. I believe all media houses should continually highlight the challenges until the menace is brought to a minimum. Already, all of us are paying far more for water because of the pollution suffered by our water bodies and the increasing cost to the water company in treating the water for our homes and industries. In terms of our developmental challenges, it is my expectation that the Ghanaian media shall develop a strong interest in economic management of our dear nation and demand answers to nagging issues including corruption and incompetence. On the other hand, the chairman of the National Media Commission, Yabwedu Ayabuafo, cautioned journalists to be circumspect in their reportage and also respect the rights of others just as they would want for themselves. You know, in recent times, a number of cases have come before the National Media Commission. And that's one trend. And the trend is that the skills of the media, which we do not consider to be justifiable, is that when you call the person, he didn't speak. The mere fact that you call me and I did not speak does not commit me to a liability or a guilt. And we have a call of appeal judge here. Now, Article 19, Clause 10 of the 1992 Constitution expressly states that even when you are standing trial for a criminal offense, you can refuse to answer any question put to you by the judge. And the judge cannot, solely on the basis of the fact that you did not respond, convict you. 
So I will appeal to our media people like this, that we must find better means of verifying our story and not just basing it on the fact that when you call the person, the person did not respond. Meanwhile, some journalists shared their experiences on the field of work with City News. Those of us who are journalists in this country have had concerns, and these concerns are born out of specific actions against journalists. Uh, sometimes physical abuse, um, attacks, threats, that go generally unpunished and nobody is held accountable. So these issues have all resulted in the kind of uh, deterioration we are witnessing and the rankings keep getting worse. And the reality in my ground, uh, sorry, in my opinion, is even worse than the ranking. So if we don't sit up and then if duty bearers, the government especially, doesn't stop living in denial and confront the issue of safety of journalists, we can only get worse and that will affect our democracy. Then GBC was a state broadcaster. We were the only station until the liberalization of the airwaves that many radio stations and television stations came up. And so there is a code of ethics of the Ghana Journalists Association here. There are the do's and don'ts, which in every profession you have to know. But GBC, for instance, oversight was big that we had our supervisors, even our directors, those who read the news and things, to make sure that um, authentic news comes from GBC.